Now, Romans 10, 17. All right. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, that is exactly what it says in King James. All right? But when I read that, even though I read the words and you heard the words, you translated it different. Because you've been taught religiously, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing it and hearing it and keep on hearing it and keep on hearing it and faith will come if you just keep on hearing it. That is not what that word says. That word says faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. You say, okay, I, I, I don't get it. What are you talking about? Okay. This is where we get this idea between rhema words and, and logos. You know, okay, logos is the written word and rhema words is the special word God speaks to you. That's not true. I'll just go ahead and tell you. Right? Just jump to the end and tell you right now. That's not true. That is not a biblical doctrine. I can prove it to you. Matter of fact, I do in your manual. The words are all there. There's nothing in there about rhema being a special word from God. Okay? Let me tell you. I'll just tell you. I'm going to tell you the end result real quick just so you know it. Okay? Rhema is nothing more than the logos you do. If you want Logos to be Rhema, you don't have to wait till God drops a Rhema on you. You do the Logos, and when you do the Logos, it becomes real to you, and that's Rhema. Rhema is a word... Okay, man does not live by bread alone, but by every Rhema that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Okay? Now, when that says that word, what it's basically saying is that man lives by the Rhema, by the word that you live by. You, you get that? You live, you live by the word that you do. See, man does not live by every word of this book. They should, but they don't. But there are some words in here you do. The words you do, you live by. See, if there, there may be some laws you obey and some you don't. Right? And the ones you live, the ones that you obey habitually, those are the ones you live by. The ones you violate, you don't live by them. Is that right? Amen. Same thing with the, with the Word of God. The words you, you habitually obey, you live by. The words you habitually violate, you're not living by those words, right? Well, the, now, Logos is everything that's in here, the Word of God, written, rightly divided, in context, okay? That's the Logos. When you get the Logos and you start doing it, then it becomes rhema to you, right? Ephesians tells us, Ephesians 6 tells us, and, and taking, above all, take the shield of faith, but also says, take the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Right? And that word, word there. Okay? Now, the main thing about this is this. You take the word of God, you start to do it. Now, it says to desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Hear that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't say meat. It says milk. Desire the milk of the word. What you read in here, this, the logos, the, right, the word of God rightly divided, written out. Okay? Because you have to remember, when they first... The first book of the Bible, James, actually was written around 49, roughly 49, uh, yeah, first book of the New Testament, should say that, was written around 49 A.D. So for the first 50 years, and Jesus being crucified around 27 A.D., roughly 27 to 30 A.D., in that time, that means we're looking at about 20 years that there was no written word of God, and yet they preached the word, according to Acts, from day one. So it wasn't the written down word, it was the word that they knew that they lived by. You get that? Then they started writing it down. Now, we make a big deal out of the written word, but they didn't have the written word for the first 20 years. And then they only had one book. And the whole thing didn't come together for another 90 years, and then it wasn't compiled for almost 300 years. Wow. Now, think about that, right? That means that they had to know what was going on inside of them. They had to believe the word of God. They had to be led by the Spirit. They knew all these things, and they had, it had to be real to them. So he says, Desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. Milk, you grow by milk. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's this written word. But you're not mature until you take this written word, this, the milk of the word of God, and do it. You take the Logos, you do it. When you start to do it, by reason of use, you have your senses exercised to discern good and evil, and that's maturity. Meat is not something you dig out and look at. Meat is the milk you do. Do you get that? Yes. Meat is the milk you do. Okay, now, let's read on here. I'll prove it. He says... Well, I should go back to Romans 10 there and tell you when it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The reason it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, then what happens is you hear something. Now, for instance, when I was in the military, we had to shoot several, we had to qualify with several different weapons. Uh, back then it was the M16, it was the, we had to shoot the 12 gauge shotgun, the 45, the 1911 45. We had these different weapons that we had to learn to shoot. <clears throat> now, and we had to qualify with each one. And so with the, like now it's the AR-15 or the M4 that they use, but 
with the eight, with the M16. Whenever I got out of the military, it was funny. We I would go to I used to hang out in bars. I didn't drink, but I'd go to play pool, and that's where you found the best pool players. So I'd hang out in bars and play pool, and invariably there'd be somebody there who probably honestly never served a day in his life in the military, but they like to show up in camouflage, you know, and sit at the bar and talk a good game. And they would talk about all the things that they'd done. Like, well, I'll tell you what, that M16, that's a fine weapon. I'll tell you, that thing will shoot 1,200 rounds in a minute. And, and, and a matter of fact, if it even misses you, it'll pull the muscle out of your arm because of the vacuum of the bullet going by. Well, now, that sounds real good if you ain't ever shot one. Right? And if I heard you say that and I never shot one, you might be able to convince me if you sounded convincing enough. But if I've shot one, guess what? You can't fool me. Because I know what it'll do. Matter of fact, most of the time, especially in Vietnam, they were so unreliable, half the time, our guys would throw them down and grab up an AK-47. You know, AK-47s, you, you could bury the thing in the mud. Pull it out, rack it, bam, bust the mud out of it, it'd fire. M-16, you know, get dust in the chamber and it locks up on you. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> if you fired one, see, once you've done it, you can't be fooled. And the reason I'm telling you is because the Word of God, once you do the Logos and you're doing it and it's rhema to you, guess what? <laughs> People can't fool you. You're not going to be led astray on weird doctrines. You're not going to be tossed to and fro ever as children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. You're going to be mature. You're going to be grown up. You're going to be spiritually minded instead of carnally minded. And you're going to know what's true and you're going to be able to discern right and wrong, good and evil because you've done it. Right. Amen? Somebody come to me today and say, well, you know, healing passed away. Okay, guess what? I, I'm not even going to argue with them. I'm going to walk off probably. Yeah. Come on. You know? Amen. Why? Because I know better. You cannot fool me. You can't tell me. Well, you know, it passed away because it says, you know, this will pass away and these things, and, you know, and tongues, they passed away. Well, show me that. Well, you know, I, I don't know where it's at, but it's in there. I know because I've heard. It's amazing, you know. Half the time, but, but the people that quote that, they, they never know where it's at because they haven't done any study. All they've done is sit in a chair and let somebody tell them it's gone. Right? Now, I don't know why anybody want to sit somewhere and, t and let somebody tell you that the Word of God is no good in a church. Right? Go somewhere where people will stretch you and tell you it's, it's true. Go for it. That's the people you want to sit around and be around. So, now notice here. Remember we were in the middle of this. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. So you will hear the Word of God and you'll know what's right. You'll know what's wrong whenever you do it. Because once you do it, you can discern good and evil. That's what I was trying to get to in Romans 10, 17. 